Hello everyone and thank you so much for tuning in to ChasingCinema.com's official YouTube channel. I'm your host Jacob Toronto and today I'm going to be doing my week 8 update. Um, last week I talked about kind of how it was the first time the challenge really started affecting me and kind of got in the way of my, not got in the way of my life, but how life kind of really made the challenge a little bit more difficult. This week not so bad. Um, so let's hop right into it. Uh, the Oscars were just on Sunday. We're going to be talking a little bit about that because uh, I have a connection with one of my movies. Um, obviously, everyone's really happy Leo won. I am too. Spotlight. Uh, I wasn't too shocked. I did think towards the end of the year that The Revenant uh, would actually probably take this picture. Uh, but Spotlight was always like, uh, if uh, there could be, it could go either way. But I was, would say that I was leaning more towards Revenant. I'll admit I was wrong. You know what happens. Um... But I pretty much, me and both me and Louis Corazola predicted pretty much everything else. Mad Max winning six awards. Um, the only one that kind of really threw both of us for a loop was uh, Mark Rylance winning Best Supporting Actor over Seth Stallone. I think that was kind of the upset of the night. Um, shocking. And when a visual effects went next Machina, even though the Nevada Film Critics Society uh, predicted that. Uh, it was still a little bit like, oh, wow. Shocking. Anyway, let's hop right into it. So the first movie that I watched... We were still getting off of our Disneyland trip and still feeling, uh, um, oh no, this was way past the Disneyland trip. Anyway, I don't know. We were still high on Disney. We were like, oh man, let's watch some Disney movies. And we watched a movie called Brother Bear, um, a film that was directed by Aaron Blaze and Robert Walker. Uh, a film back from 2003, which I had never seen before, obviously, because either if I had, wouldn't have work towards this challenge but have heard a lot about and I believe it was Disney's like last animated film like 2D animated until they brought back Princess and the Frog. Uh, I love Brother Bear. I think it was very charming. I think it was very classic Disney. Uh, I would say I preferred Brother Bear way more than I preferred uh, A Princess and the Frog. I thought this movie had so much going for it. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix in the movie giving such life to the main character who I don't even want to tell you, if you've never seen it before, uh, and you don't know what it's about. Like, I thought this movie was just about a family of bears, and I was completely wrong. A lot more into it, of course. It is a Disney movie. It's sad. It's beautiful. It's funny. I mean, I laughed out loud. There's these two Canadian um, elk, uh, or, or uh, I believe they're elk, and just, they are the fun, played by Rick Reynas and Dave Thomas, uh, play Root and Took, and they are, like, the funniest characters I've seen it in a Disney movie in some time. Well, I don't know about funny. It's because, you know, a lot of characters from Disney movies are funny. But this was such an enjoyable, sweet, lighthearted movie uh, that deals with magic and, and taking lives for granted and, and sacrifice and love and being wise. There's a lot of things that I really love about this movie. Make sure to go check it out. Triple Nine is what I watched on Tuesday, uh, a little bit before the movie's release on Friday. I actually reviewed it with Mr. James Shue. If you've not seen it, click one of these buttons up here 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 um click it a link a bunch of links drop down you'll be able to see my review of triple nine uh to give you just a quick breakdown uh the film from john hillcoat was mediocre uh, i thought it was okay not a bad movie but uh definitely a letdown especially with the that many stars but usually when a movie has that many stars it's the kind of thing that happens the following day i watched probably one of my favorite movies that i've seen since doing this challenge. Like, it was just a really strong week. I mean, I watched one movie that was pretty much a disappointment. But other than that, it was a really strong week. Um, I watched St. Vincent, a uh, film from 2014, uh, which was directed by Theodore Melfi and starred Melissa, uh, Melissa McCarthy, Bill Murray, and Naomi Watts. And this movie has just so much to like. Um, you know, it was a movie that kind of went under the radar. Not many people have seen it. Uh, Louis Corzolo, uh, my... Co-writer Chasing Cinema, he saw it, really enjoyed it, and told me I needed to watch it. I finally caught it. was just on TV in the morning. I watched it. I was laughing hysterically. Um, uh, the, the movie made me cry, of course. I was, you know, I'm a big sap, if you don't know that already. Uh, but this movie touched me. It was lighthearted. It was beautiful. It was really one of the best movie experiences I've seen, I've had since starting this challenge. Uh, I really, really enjoyed this movie. Uh, Bill Murray plays such a good... I mean, you know, and, and don't get me wrong, like... I enjoy Bill Murray just as much as the next... Uh, that's probably not as true. Uh, I like Bill Murray, but the whole like Bill Murray love phenomenon, I'm not a part of. It's not that I don't think he's good enough. But, you know, I, I wouldn't wear a Bill Murray shirt. Not because 
Well, I probably would, but it's not because I'm like, oh, Bill Murray, Bill Murray, Bill Murray. Let's just say I'm not one of those people that had who I didn't freak out when Bill Murray was in Zombieland, right? I thought it was cool, but I didn't freak out like people cheering in the audience. Regardless, I like him. I just don't like love him, love him. He's not one of my favorites. Um, but he was really good in this movie. I honestly think it was one of his better performances that I've uh, ever seen him in. I think him and this kid uh, played by, what was this kid's name? Jaden Liberher, uh, who plays Oliver, had such a great chemistry. It really drives the movie. They're both really likable. Uh, they both have their issues. Um, and then seeing them kind of blend is really touching. And then obviously the end of the movie, just uh, you need a box of tissues if you're a sap like me. Great movie. The next day, I watched a movie from last year. Um, one you guys might not have heard of, which is a really big shame because I think this is a movie that is so important and, you know, and, and say says such a An important thing about what's going on in American schools that it should be shown in classrooms. I honestly think that this movie should be shown in in, in, in classrooms or or uh, in all over the country or you know in after schools. But it should be something that should be shown because of what's going on. A couple of years ago, I watched a movie called Bully uh, when it first came out, and it was a documentary that kind of followed these kids who were bullied and how bullies become such a big thing in our society. And this movie just kind of reinforces that. It, uh, Directed by Amy S. Weber, who hopefully I will be interviewing soon. Um, I'm going to have a more in-depth review of this movie coming up later this week. So I'm not going to get too in-depth because I just really want to talk about it. Uh, but it follows this uh, young girl named Jessica Burns who her and her friend Brian decide to document <clears throat> how this bully treats her. And the movie kind of goes through this entire thing about how um, she's treated, how... Uh, bullying affects both the bullier and the bully. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be reviewing this film more in depth. I really want to sit and talk about it. So that will be coming up later this week. But I really, really enjoyed this movie. I think that um, the two stars of the film, uh, Hunter King and Lexi Ainsworth, were so good in this movie that it really, really drives the message home. Um, it's done in like a documentary style. Uh, the direction, the performances really make the message very clear here, and I loved it. Uh, um, I got this actually recommendation from Cool Duder on YouTube, if you guys don't know, Sean C. Phillips. Um, I don't know him personally. Uh, we've talked a few times online, but I've been a fan of his stuff forever, and he recommended this, so I watched it, and I really enjoyed it. So uh, look out for our review, and then hopefully we'll have the director on our channel to interview. Okay. Great, okay, great, great, woof. <laughs> I watched The Cobbler, 2014 movie from Todd McCarthy starring Adam Sandler. Now, here's the weird thing. Todd, if you would have told me last year, or two years ago, 2014, that the guy who directed this movie would go on to direct the best picture of 2015, I would have laughed in your face. I really would have. Um, because this movie is god awful. And he wrote it. It wasn't like it wasn't like he just picked it up and did a side part. Like he wrote this movie. Uh co-wrote at least with Paul Sato. And uh wow, this movie was atrocious. It's just one of those movies that you kind of just say, what were they thinking? Like what were they doing writing this up? Like, did they think it was funny? Did they think it was creative? I don't know. And to be honest, the whole movie is kind of a blur. Like, I couldn't even talk to you about certain things about the movie because I was just like, blah, blah, blah. what? Yeah, that's right. I was like, blah, blah, blah. that's exactly how it was the entire movie. Uh, Steve Buscemi is in this movie, and I think he's probably the best part. Uh, Dustin Hoffman is also in it, but I mean, like, nothing. I mean, this movie is just so out there. Uh, if, if you don't know what it's about, it's about a cobbler who discovers that he has the ability uh, with this magic stitcher that he can become people uh, by putting on their shoes. Like, physically become them. Uh, and, it, it, oh gosh. Um, yeah, let's move on. Wolf. Just don't see it. Um, but it is quite interesting. Watch Spotlight, which won Best Picture on Sunday. Which is a phenomenal movie. I gave it four to four stars. ChasingCinema.com slash Spotlight. And then watch this. And then tell me if you realize it was directed by the same person. It's it, it tells you that, you know, don't ever count someone out because uh, they could do the worst and do the best. Sandra Bullock had that, you know, she won Best Actress for Blindside and uh, the Razzie for Worst Actress in All About Steve. So, you know, never count anyone out. It's, yeah, wow. 
Uh, the following night, I watched Mr. Peabody and Sherman, the animated adventure from 2014. Louis reviewed this movie on Chasing Cinema, um, and he told me it was, you know, quite fun, quite quite uh, a good adventure, so I sat down and watched it. Um, I thought it was good. I don't think it was anything too memorable, but I think that the visual style and the world that is created and all the fun things that we get to go do is enjoyable. Uh, but after seeing um, Brother Bear, uh, I thought it was... Not as good, not as special, it didn't touch me as much. And then, lo and behold, the next animated movie that I would watch uh, would blow me away even further. And that is a French film called Une Vie de Cat. Or Une, Une Vie de Chat. I don't know, I don't speak French. Um, but it's a cat in Paris. So, all those people who do speak French, I'm sorry, I butchered that title. Um, and this movie is so beautiful. It's just an hour, hour and ten minute animated film classic animation style um, and it tells a story about this cat who is uh, belongs to this girl whose father was murdered and her mom's never around and at nights he goes out and wanders and helps this cat burglar and how all their worlds kind of collide and this is one of the best animated movies I think I've ever seen this was such a good movie I easily thought the Vin uh, St. Vincent was going to be my favorite movie uh, of this week, but I honestly think that this was my favorite movie this week. It was just so well done, so creative, so stylish. I mean, it was so f so refreshing, so exciting to watch. I mean, it's classic 2D with the style of everything. There's this, like, to give you an example, there's this great scene um, where this, this, this character is spraying perfume. And the cat smells it, but you could see the perfume because it's taken shape of her and it's flying through the city of Paris. And oh man, I mean, it is just a great, great watch. Um, this movie, St. Vincent, uh, A Girl Like Her, Brother Britt, were all really great watches. And you know, I think this movie, just probably because it might be the freshest in my memory, but I really, really loved this movie. I thought it was just such a great, fun, beautiful watch. Um, I will say, I think I was more emotionally invested in St. Vincent. But I think they're just the style and the look of this crime family animated movie just made me go, wow, like that is amazing. This movie's from 2010. I believe it was nominated for Best Animated Film. Um, could be Best Animated Short. Let me double check that. That's an hour and 10 minutes long. So it's Best Animated um, in 2010, Best Animated Feature uh, in 2012. Probably because it wasn't brought to the States till later. Uh, but I mean, wow, this was such a let's see what it lost to real quick such a just beautiful movie i just had such a great time watching it um okay this was the year that i thought i found it i found short of course i did not find this now um oh animated feature ringo one animated uh feature film of the year and to be honest even though kung fu panda 2 which i really really love was nominated I uh, probably would have picked that, but I definitely would have picked Cat in the Paris or Kung Fu Panda 2 before I would have chose Rango. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for this week, guys. Thank you so much for uh, watching this video. Make sure to subscribe so you see all my week updates uh, and all, all of our uh, video reviews. We're going to be reviewing Zootopia and Whiskey Tango Foxtrot this week, as well as A Girl Like Her later in the week. And then hopefully we'll be having the director come on and a few more interviews lined up. Make sure to give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Check out some of these movies. Let me know how you feel down here in the comment sections below. My name is Jake Trono, and please continue chasing cinema.